The next subcategory control inside of risk management strategy, IDRM2. Organizational risk tolerance is determined and clearly expressed. I think this is a very overlooked control and a practice by a lot of organizations. CISO is a person in charge of security. Look at them to own the risk. It's the business's risk. We're just here as security practitioners to advise you on the best course of action. So when we're looking at something as simple as establishing a risk tolerance, we really need to you know, do it in, in a, the most basic way. If the risk tolerance of the organization is set here through discussions, okay, anything above the risk tolerance should not be accepted. Anything below should be accepted. Now, accepted doesn't mean ignore, okay? This is where you need to address, accept, work on whatever it is that you need to do. You need to address the risk inside of this space. And it can only be done if you have a policy and procedure, right, in place to be able to identify what those risks are, appropriately apply remediations to those risks, outright remove the risks if you need to, transfer them off through maybe some type of an insurance or something like that. But you need to have this line established. And however you go about establishing that, it's conversations with your uh, executives, your board, other stakeholders, whoever it is, this idea of a tolerance within the organization needs to be uh, established. It's a very difficult thing for a lot of practitioners to go through. I understand that. Uh, but once you have a clear understanding by both the stakeholders and yourself, the person performing the risk assessments, shepherding security through the organization, you will be able to have a much better conversation when you run into issues in the future. Say you have some type of legacy systems in place. Well, this risk tolerance will now be able to allow you and those stakeholders to be able to clearly and quickly address are those legacy controls, is the inability to remediate that above our risk tolerance or not. So once you've established this, kind of play by this you know, simple uh, graph. There's a lot that goes into creating what this is, but this is the concept. This is the idea that you need to get to when you're establishing some type of a risk tolerance. A line must be drawn. Now, it's up to the business to definitively say where this line is, but you need to establish it with them. And then once it's clearly expressed, it's going to be a lot easier for you or anybody else in the organization to be able to determine, do we need to address this or not? Is this within our risk tolerance or not? NIST 853, okay, PM9, okay, outlines this very concept. An organizational-wide risk management strategy includes, for example, unambiguous expression of risk tolerance for the organization, acceptable risk assessment methodologies, risk mitigation strategies, a process for consistently evaluating risk across the organization with respect to the organization's risk tolerance, and approaches for monitoring risk over time. The use of a risk executive function, or a CISO, Huh? can facilitate consistent organization-wide application of the risk management strategy. Again, shepherding the strategy to address those things that are above the risk tolerance for the organization. Again, take a look. NIST 853, Rev 4 and Rev 5, PM 9 has this outline. IDRM2, organizational risk tolerance is determined and clearly expressed, whether it's through enterprise risk management group, some type of higher level board or audit committee type of, you know, feedback, whatever it is, is it uh, determined? Is it clearly expressed? And is it uh, followed? So again, take a look at this. Not the easiest control to get through, but I assure you, one that you definitely need to be doing, along with the rest of the ones in the NIST CSF. Take a look. Thanks.